We're now going to introduce uh, Gauss's law and the symmetry that's uh, so important to Gauss's law. Uh, and we're going to do that through the calculation of a flux through a spherical surface around a point charge. So just to make sure we all have the same perspective, we have our point charge plus Q here at the center. We know from Coulomb's law, F equals QE, that the electric field is, points radially out and is given by KQ on R squared. Now, our spherical surface is going to sit symmetrically around that point charge plus Q, and that spherical surface doesn't have to be there. So that's why that spherical surface, it says over here, is a theoretical construct, and after we finish our flux calculation here and formally uh, get the language uh, for Gauss's law in place, we're going to refer to that sphere as a, that theor theoretical construct sphere as a Gaussian sphere, and that Gaussian sphere will have the Gaussian surface. Now, let's employ our dot product calculation to calculate electric flux, and so we're going to jump down here just for a moment to write down the electric flux through that red sphere is given by e dot n hat dA integral. And I'll get to that fancy notation that's shown here, the integral with the circle through it in a moment. Uh, but dot product is magnitude of the first, magnitude of the second, cosine of the angle between the two. So that's why the n hat vectors, as I said, are so important to kind of start your analysis with conceptually to make sure that you can take the dot product of that n hat vector, which is perpendicular to the surface, and the e vector that is shown here is going to give us our cosine of zero degrees. And when we do our dot product, please make sure you get this into your notes, that that electric field value that we write down, right, magnitude of the first, that kq on r squared is going to be constant. It's going to have the same value everywhere on the surface by symmetry because we placed our theoretical construct sphere symmetrically about the q. Well, now our math really falls into place nicely. So we get magnitude of the first kq on r squared. Magnitude of the second, which is our dA, right? And the direction is r hat, and that's why we get the cosine of 0 degrees, or positive 1, because we have the r hat dot r hat. And that fancy notation, so that little, little circle that we put on the integral, please make sure you get this into your notes over here, that that circle around the integral means that you are integrating around a closed path, if it was one-dimensional, or in this case, uh, surface, in, in the case for the two-dimensional dA integral, that we're calculating the entire area. Well, our integration now becomes very nice because we can factor out the kq on r squared because that's the constant on the surface, so that is going to always come out of the integral by symmetry, and we'll have to make that argument to the AP grader that we are saying this comes out by symmetry. Now, the integral uh, of dA is A, so we have a, this is why I said we don't really need to do the double integral because we're working with such nice geometries. The integral of dA is A, and we're just going to memorize that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So there we have our flux through that theoretical construct sphere, and notice uh, we're going to address very quickly now the fact that we lose the r squareds. So we're going to pick this up on our next page of notes. So remember this solution, kq for pi, the r squareds cancel out, and let, let's see the significance of that. Well, there it is, right? So I just repeated that same line of notes here. And yes, indeed, the r squareds cancel out, and that is really significant to us. Why is that really significant to us? Well, that is really significant to us because... As it says here, and make sure you get this into your notes, anything I have exploded is important to get in there, is that the 
size of that sphere really didn't matter. We could have made a small theoretical construct sphere or a really, really, really big theoretical construct sphere. The R's cancel out. The flux is the same no matter the size. So we get 4 pi k. Well, we're going to add the q enclosed here because it was only the q enclosed in, the, in this surface that we um, considered. Uh, we didn't even talk about the possibility of q's being outside the surface, but we'll talk about that uh, more on our next page of notes. But for right now, for completeness, get the q enclosed in there. We know that k is 1, one on 4 pi epsilon naught, so we can simplify our calculation, and that's what we do. So we simplify our calculation. The 4 pi's cancel out, as is shown here. So we get our integral, as it has in your notes, so you don't need to, to really put anything more in here, that our integral for flux, e dot n hat dA for the sphere, equals q enclosed over epsilon naught, and that's it. Everything else canceled out, right? The R's, that R squared canceled out. So it did not matter the size of the sphere. So we will see that this becomes really important. And as it says here, this is Gauss's law for spherical uh, symmetry. And we're going to show on our next page of notes the mathematical proof that for any closed surface, we are going to see that regardless of symmetry or not, and that that's going to be not apparent based on what we've talked about right at the moment. But whether there is symmetry or not, the flux will always be equal to Q enclosed on epsilon naught, and that is Gauss's law.